All right, so you've seen the milking machine in action, and uh, man, has this thing uh, just made our life uh, so much better here. One of the things that we wanted to do when we moved out to this farm was, uh, was milk goats. Uh, we've had these goats out here, these dwarf Nigerians is the breed that we have here almost solely. Um, the, the goat that you just saw being milked was actually a dwarf Nigerian and a pygmy cross, uh, and she doesn't do too bad, so she's actually one of our lighter milkers out of the two that we're milking right now. Uh, she gives about a half a quart a day, uh, which is you know not too bad for her size. Um, we don't use a huge amount of goat's milk so those dwarf breeds are perfect for us but the thing with them is is that their udders are fairly small and so for a person you know an adult with hands my size they're very difficult to milk uh, and also you know milking two three four goats which is what we eventually want to do daily here is, is quite a task it takes a lot of time and, and it's hard on your hands and things like that especially when it's cold out so so one of the things that I sought right away was a way to milk these goats um, automatically. So I wanted to build something to, to make this process so much easier. So what I've come up with, um, this is very similar to designs that are all over out there. But if you go to buy this kit, there's a kit very similar to this off of Amazon. Uh, and there's also a farm that uh, makes these things and sells them. They're like 130, 140, 150, 160 dollars, even more than that. Um, and, and that's just not worth it. I'll never recoup that money, um, you know, milking goats. That's just not, not worth it for me. So what I have here is a basic DIY milking machine. You guys can make this in 15, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, everything I have here is available at, uh, on Amazon and I'll put links in the description for each one of these parts, everything you need to make this besides the mason jar. I'm using a regular standard one quart wide mouth mason jar. Uh, you can use a, any, any mason jar you want, big or small, depending on the goats you're milking. That's up to you uh, and that's always you know tailored to whatever you have this is a good size for us what you have is just three of these uh, this air tubing or uh, medical tubing this is actually from the tubing here is from uh, those air masks those oxygen masks that you can get and uh, that's actually what you'll buy in the Amazon link you get that oxygen mask you get all the tubing that you need um, and then we also have some uh, what are these sizes here these are uh, I think 12 milliliter um, syringe uh, cups, whatever you want to call these. It's the actual, you know, plastic part of the syringe. And uh, these are the size that we needed for these goats. If you have bigger goats or whatever, you can get just whatever size uh, um, cups will work for you. And uh, again, this is all, I'll put the link to these on Amazon also. These here are also available at Walmart. I even went to the pharmacy at Walmart. Uh, I think it's like a Rite Aid or whatever in there. And uh, they gave me a couple. So, you know, they just have them laying around there. The, these are not expensive. And then the heart of this machine is this little uh, food saver vacuum sealer so uh, it's battery operated and uh, you can so you can use it right off off battery power to milk two goats back to back the battery doesn't really last long enough it, it definitely lasts long enough for one goat but it starts to slow down at the second one and so I always just keep it plugged in you can run this thing uh, while it's plugged in which is nice uh, and so I just keep it out here I have an extension cord run I just leave it out here and keep it plugged in for winter time I might bring it in but uh, I just keep it uh, keep keep power source out here for it and so that's pretty much it so the vacuum sealer uh, actually has this uh, disconnectable top part to it and uh, so I just you know this just seals right down there it's like a rubber seal so I can take this whole piece in right here with the jar and uh, wash all of this and sterilize it and all that good stuff and then I can just come back out here when I'm ready to milk and I just pop this on here and then I've got my my suction ready to go. I'll show you a close-up of a couple of the fittings just so you can see how to put this together and uh, it's it's really easy guys you're drilling three holes and uh, using some glue to seal the hoses into each fit each fitting and and that's it. So the first part of this is the mason jar and I have this on just one of the standard um, you know mason jar lids. Now you can use any jar you want to and, and whatever kind of even a plastic top or uh, or these metal tops. The plastic tops would actually probably be easier to get the seal to work on um, but uh, what I did was I just drilled holes just slightly smaller than the tubing that I had and um, I actually found that uh, super glue worked best and that's why this is all discolored from the super glue but I just ran a little bead of uh, 
uh, I think I had Loctite super glue. You can use Gorilla Glue, whatever kind of super glue you want. Um, you can use silicone. You can use all kinds of different sealers. But uh, hot glue did not work. I tried that here. Um, hot glue did not work on the metal. It didn't stick very well. It stuck to the plastic fine, but not the metal. So um, just ran a bit of super glue around these and sealed those up. I tried it without any glue, just by the friction fit of the hole. And uh, I did have some air leaks, and that caused it to uh, not perform as well. So you definitely want to make sure you get those sealed up. So you have three hoses that go into here. Two of them are for the uh, um, the udder cups, and then you have one that goes to the actual vacuum sealer. The length of the hoses really is up to you, but uh, um, you know I just used whatever kind of worked for us and our, our milking stanchion here and everything. At the end of these syringes, the air hosing actually fits right on the end of it pretty well, but I threw a bead of hot glue in there and stuffed the, uh, the air hose on, and that seals that up pretty well and keeps the air hose nice and tight into these uh, these cups. On the end of the food saver vacuum sealer uh, it has this little attachment, and this is this is one of those ones that you use for like uh, those Ziploc bags. They have like a fitting on them, and you can you know vacuum seal food into them. Um, and so I actually drilled uh, the same size hole I used for the the jar lids right through this uh, rubber piece, and then I just you can see I just used some hot glue to uh, to seal that in there, and uh, that works perfectly. So none of this has leaked at all since I've sealed it up. And uh, you know you could hear an air leak if there was one, and there's there's none. So how this works is basically you're creating a vacuum in the jar. So the uh, when you press the uh, vacuum sealer here, it's sucking the air out of the jar itself, and it creates a vacuum in here, which then wants to pull air in, and so it's pulling you know the milk in uh, through the uh, the other two. Um, uh, hoses here or tubes. So if your milk does get all the way up to the top here, you'll start to suck milk into the actual vacuum sealer, which you don't want to do with actual vacuum pump, uh, which which you want to avoid, of course. Um, this does has a safety on it though, so if you did get milk in here, it actually doesn't affect the uh, the pump uh, as long as you don't fill it up. I mean, if you've got a bunch of milk in there, it'll it'll probably wreck it. But so that's that's the the construction of it. It's super simple. Uh, it, it didn't take me long to put together and. What a huge difference in cost as uh, as far as the ones you can buy online uh, versus just making it yourself. So let me grab one of the other goats and uh, we'll go through kind of the milking setup we have here um, and uh, just how we're going through this process uh, right now to get these goats milked. So this milking stand was built entirely from a couple pallets except for the uh, four by four legs. And this little bench serves as a step for the goats to get up as well as a seat for you to sit on while you're milking. So this is actually just a friction fit uh, uh, neck holder, and this uh, pivots along the bottom here. I have a full video on building this, uh, this whole stand out of the pallets that I had. Um, but this basically just comes over and clamps the goat's neck in, and then you just put the spacer in at the top, and then that holds the, you know, the board from, from moving or sliding over. So it actually works really well, and uh, has not been an issue for me at all. So um, no latches, no hardware to buy or anything like that. Works pretty good. So this is this is Annabelle. She's produces a lot more milk uh, for us than the other goat, but uh, she's a little more nervous and she kicks a lot more trying to get her started. But um, we do wipe down the udders with just some saline wipes. Um, now, one of the things that I know a lot of people do is they actually and these are going to be cold, so she's not going to like this. I know. So one of the things I know a lot of people do is they express a little bit of milk out of the udder, you know, just to get them started, just to, to make sure that if there's any infection or anything going on with the udders that you get that out of there. Um, I have not done that with this machine. I just put it on and go. Um, I've not noticed any issues or any difference with anything. Um, but if you want to do that, you can just put it on, you know, run the pump for a few seconds, get your know, first, uh, you know, couple drips of milk out or whatever you want to do, and then just dump that out and then go ahead and, and hook back up and, and start again. So um, now my helper has gone back into homeschool. So. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to get this started with one person, but what I normally do is just put the pump between my legs and squeeze the, the button with my knees, and then use both hands to hook up the uh, the, the cups. Um, that works pretty well. So I'm just gonna put that uh, between my knees so I can press the button. She likes to kick a lot, but...
And that's really all there is to it, getting it set up. Um, the hardest part usually is just getting it set up with, uh, with a goat who likes to kick. But uh, even then, it only takes a few seconds to get started. Uh, what I like to do, it's got a vacuum on it right now, so I just give it a, a little nudge every once in a while. It just kind of keeps the flow going. Um, you don't want to go too fast or anything like that. It doesn't seem to be uncomfortable for them or anything once it gets hooked up and just kind of slowly uh, expresses all the milk for you. Now, I normally milk these goats every night and so this is actually they've gone a whole day plus the morning this morning so she's probably going to overfill my jar so i may have to hook up again and just get the rest of the milk out uh we'll see how it goes here milking you know your goats by hand i i, I don't think i would even do it i don't think i would even be able to do it in this case um and that's why i think a lot of people don't milk goats you got to make sure you do it every day otherwise they'll dry up uh, and so you know if you go out of town or something like that it becomes very difficult I could have a you know a teenager do this uh, for us if we needed to go out of town for a couple days very easily they don't have to learn how to do much you just hook this thing up and sit here and press the button it takes about five minutes to fill a full quart and that's it maybe I'll check some comments while I let it just the suction kind of die down on her here or she'll probably kick them off at this point um, one side did finish earlier than the other and now uh, one thing that I have done in the past you can keep the plungers for those syringes and you can take one off put a plunger in it to block the vacuum and then just milk one side at a time uh, that works also but uh, usually I just leave them both on there and they do a fine job of uh, you know if one gets done earlier it holds the suction and the other one just finishes So when I take them off, I usually break the vacuum on the actual uh, vacuum pump first so that I'm not pulling them off of her udders. And uh, that way it's less uncomfortable for her as I take them off. But um, not bad for a, a dwarf uh, Nigerian goat. Um, this is a, a Nigerian pygmy cross, actually. But uh, about a quart, a little over a quart there. Um, I think that's pretty good. Look at that, nice quart of fresh goat's milk. Uh, we can't wait to get started with uh, using this to make all kinds of uh, things, goat's milk soaps and cheeses and other things. Uh, we're, we're just getting started with all this uh, goat milking stuff here. And so, uh, man, this, uh, this automatic uh, milking machine has just made life so much easier. Uh, you know, now that the goats are starting to get used to it, it's getting easier and easier every day. Um, I, I don't know if I would be able to do this without that little machine. But part of what we found, you know, living out here in this, uh, on the farm is that if you don't make things easy, if you don't set up processes for this stuff and, and come up with the easiest and simplest and fastest way to do these things, that they just don't get done. Uh, what's happened in the past is we haven't milked the goats. Last year, these goats were pregnant and we had plans to milk them. It was in more of the colder months. Um, you know, it just didn't happen. It was just, we, we tried it a few times, it was difficult. Um, and, and we just let it pass by and they dried up and we never got to it. With this milking machine, you know, it's the only way that I found that personally that I, I can do this. Um, there's just too many other things going on and it just takes too much time uh, to do it. But with that milk machine, I can come out here, I can do other things, I can check comments, I can, um, you know, listen to music, I can study, I can read the Bible, I can do whatever it is that I need to get done while I'm actually milking the goat uh, with one hand. So. Um, you know, it, like I said, it takes about five minutes. Loading the goats on and off is really the hardest part, and that only takes a couple seconds, uh, as long as the goats cooperate with getting in and out of the pen. So it really makes this, this whole process easy. I can do this in a hurry. I can do this in the morning before going out and doing other things. I can do it at night, uh, whatever it takes. And literally the whole entire process, I can be out here for less than 20 minutes from start to finish and come inside and have uh, a couple quarts of goat's milk every day. So 
Uh, for us, that is uh, exactly what we were looking for. So if you have questions about building one of these little homemade uh, um, goat milking machines, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, like I said, the link's in the description to all the products that uh, we used, and so you can just jump on it and get those things. I'll also put a link to uh, basically the same thing that uh, is available on Amazon um, by another, uh, another vendor out there. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description too. You can check the price out on those, and maybe you don't want to build one, you want to buy one. If you got money, hey go ahead and do that so but as always guys uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video today uh, this is our first kind of year going through milking goats we have goats everywhere out here and so we're gonna be milking we've got uh, uh, we've got two out here that we're milking right now there's a third one that has the babies behind me we'll be milking her also shortly uh, and uh, we're just gonna keep breeding these goats out and we're looking for the best features and traits as we keep doing that and we want to get the best milk goats that's the idea here in a small breed of goat so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed thumbs up on the video as always subscribe if you want to follow along lots of good stuff coming up this fall um, building projects uh, all kinds of animal stuff farming things DIY whatever is going on around here wood stove is going in soon so check out those videos coming out as well so as always guys thanks for watching have a good one